Hi everyone. A more sophisticated way to combine functions is to compose them, which is when you apply functions in sequence, like we did in section 1.4 on transformations, when we applied a translation, then a reflection, then a translation. Compositions of functions. Now, here's a good example of that. Let's say you input a number into your calculator, a value for x, and then you press a function button on your calculator, a g button on your calculator. The result is going to be g of x, the resulting number on your display. And then let's say you press the f button on your calculator, a function button, which takes this as the input. So the output for the g function now becomes the input for the f function. The, the output, the final output, will then be f of g of x. Now consider merging these two calculator buttons together as a single button or function, f circle g. A calculator button that first applies the g function and then the f function. We go right to left in the same way that we go inside out with parentheses. So remember, the function f circle g applies g first and then f. You press the g button first, take the output, and then press the f button. So let f and g be functions. The composite function f circle g is defined by f circle g of x equals f of g of x. Now the domain is a bit freaky looking, but don't worry, I, I won't be pushing you too hard on this. What are the legal values of x that will get us a real output out here? The set of all x in the reals such that x is in the domain of g, so it's a legal input to g. It's a legal input to the first button, and the resulting output, g of x, is a legal input for the f button. So the domain consists of legal inputs to G that yield outputs that are legal inputs to F. The set of all X in the real such that X is in the domain of G and the outputs G of X are in the domain of F. Again, it's rather complicated and I won't be pushing you on that. Now, order might matter. F circle G may or may not be the same function as G circle F. Uh, composition is not a commutative operation. For example, think about reflections and translations back in section 1.4. In the exercises, you'll do some examples. Here's an example of composition. Let f of u equal 1 over u, and this does turn out to be easier when you have u as your independent variable here. It's less confusing. Although in principle, you could have f of x equals 1 over x. There's nothing wrong with that, except that it can end up being confusing. In any case, f here is the reciprocal function on the implied domain. g of x equals root x minus 1. All right, find f circle g of x and the domain. Uh, bear in mind, though, I won't be pushing you on that too hard. All right, so f circle g of x. So uh, again, remember, f of u is 1 over u, g of x is root x minus 1. f circle g of x is f of g of x, g of x is root x minus 1. What does f do to root x minus 1? Well, what does f do to any legal input? Takes its what? Takes its reciprocal. So we take the reciprocal of root x minus 1, we get 1 over root x minus 1. Another way of looking at this, uh, this is f of u, where the result is 1 over u, and you substitute in. This is u. g of x is u. You substitute this in for u. We want f of u, where u is root x minus 1. What is f of u? It's 1 over u. What was u? It was root x minus 1. You substitute or plug in. Now, I'm not going to push you too hard 
on the domain issue in the context of composite functions. Uh, but this would be or would have been legal on exams. If I were to say h of x equals 1 over root x minus 1, then we could treat this as a straight domain problem. When does this yield real results if and only if x minus 1 is positive? That is, when x is greater than 1. And it does turn out that's the only restriction on the domain, even in the composite setting. There are no other hidden restrictions. So uh, here's the domain of f circle g in set builder form, graphical form, and interval form. However, sometimes there are hidden domain restrictions, sometimes kind of complicated ones. But our focus here will be, again, on how to construct the rule for a composite function. Let f of x equal 1 over x squared minus 7, and g of x equal the square root of x minus 3. Find f circle g of x. That's our key concern. And also, we'll discuss the domain of f circle g. All right. Now, first of all, it might actually be to your benefit if you rewrite this rule as f of u equals 1 over u squared minus 7. Because some people are going to find it weird to plug in something in x in for x. That's weird for some people. f circle g of x is f of g of x. g of x is the square root of x minus 3. I'll put that in red. The square root of x minus 3. That goes in here. And what is, what is f of root x minus 3? Well, substitute this in for u here. This is u, the input, the argument to f. You put that in for u here. Or if you just leave uh, in terms of f of x, you plug this in for x, but that seems kind of weird. In any case, you get 1 over this thing, blah, squared, minus 7. 1 over the u guy, root x minus 3, that's squared, minus 7. The square of the square root of x minus 3 is x minus 3. As long as this is non-negative, the x minus 3, I'll mention that later. I will note that, though. <laughs> x minus 3 cannot be negative. Uh, that was the case way up here. But see, when we square the radical, we're going to hide the restriction. So we have 1 over x minus 3, all minus 7. We get 1 over x minus 10. Now, it should be evident from the final expression that x cannot be 10. But there was a hidden restriction. The radicand here cannot be negative, And this is equivalent to x being at least 3. So that's a hidden restriction. So here's the composite function rule. That's my key concern. But the domain is more complicated. x cannot be 10, but also x has to be at least 3. It's easiest to see graphically. x has to be at least 3, but we have to skip over the 10. In interval form, you can get the interval form from the graph. But again, uh, I would not ask this on an exam, because you're talking about the domain of a composite function framed as a composite function. I think that's too complicated. Even books have a hard time explaining it. Next up something you're going to have to do a lot of in calculus, how do you decompose a composite function? I give you a big, ugly function or a function rule. How do you break it down into bite-sized pieces that calculus can attack? <laughs>